Spurs is coming up at the weekend. Uh, a bit sad about the Man United game. I thought that was there for the taking, to be honest. Um, we've not got no wins. Well, we have got one win in the 1997-98 season, sorry, at the Old Trafford. Uh, but in sort of the modern era, we've got no wins at Old Trafford. It's uh, it's annoying. That was probably one of our best chances to get a win as well at Old Trafford, I think, with the squad that they had and some of the players that they had had out. You know, they had no Martial up top, no Pogba in the middle, no Luke Shaw. Um, so, <laughs> we didn't turn up. It could have gone either way uh, with the with the penalty decision. Um, I, you know, if we got a penalty and we won 1-0, I'd have been saying the same thing. We didn't turn up. It was atrocious, I think, from start to finish. We couldn't break them down. 11 men behind the ball. That's, that was it. Right, today's show, um, snippets of the love... Love Sport um, interview that I did in the week and also a chat with a fellow 100% LCFC member Don, Don Cole or The Don as I like to call him uh, and I've also got some snippets from some Spurs fans as well, some Spurs YouTubers on what their thoughts are coming up for the King Power Stadium Clash against Spurs. Thank you for listening, have a listen to this and uh, enjoy. Before we get into it, how are you feeling towards the start that Leicester have made to this Premier League season? Look, we are still up the top. We're, you know, we're, we're in fifth uh, alongside the uh, the big six, so to speak. Um, I, we've, we've scored the least amount of goals, so we look the least threatening. And uh, I'm a little bit worried about the weekend coming up with Spurs. Uh, they absolutely hammered Crystal Palace at the weekend. And, but they have got Champions League football, so we've got a lot to discuss. Well, you mentioned it there, Lee. You said, you know, you are up there in that top six. And that has to be the aim this year, doesn't it, for Leicester? Because if we look at those sides, who are going to break it? Everton, Wolves, yourselves. Leicester seem to be, before the start of the season at least, very much the favourites. First full year for Brendan Rodgers. You've spent money. You had to be confident of breaking that. Yeah, definitely. Uh, I think with the, the signings of like Tillemans, uh, who for me, by the way, still hasn't uh, really shown his £40 million value right now, uh, just doesn't seem to have turned up. But if you're basing him off of the end of last season, you know, £40 million for a player in my day as a Leicester fan is, is out of the world. You know, it's not, it's not the norm. So there's clearly ambition there and obviously taking Brendan Rodgers on like you said it was a, a, a massive move forward from I think Claude Puel so the ambitions there uh, the fans believe I think um, we've seen that the team are now uh, you know they're a group now they're huddled after games uh, you see that outside uh, after the you know the, the final whistle goes they are on the pitch huddled talking I suppose just you know either congratulating each other or you know speaking to themselves of what went wrong so what did go wrong at the weekend that's, that's the question. That's the question. <laughs> that is the question, Lee. That is a question I will be asking. But first, if we look at that start to the Premier League season, obviously, Lee, every Premier League game is tough. There are no gimmies, you know, there are no walkovers. But the, the schedule that Leicester had to start the season was very challenging, wasn't it? I mean, Wolves at home, no easy game. Then Chelsea away, Sheffield United away, Bournemouth a, a no easy game. Then you've just played Man United at Old Trafford. It wasn't the easiest of starts for Brendan's side this year, was it? No, I mean, and like you just said, you know, it's a, it's a tough one because Wolves are a very, you know, similar sort of side to Leicester in terms of where they could probably finish, you know, in the top, definitely in the top 10. Um, they have Europe to worry about. Uh, we don't. But, uh, you know, you've got uh, Sheffield United, who newly promoted teams always, you know, really want to do well. I mean, look at Norwich at the weekend, you know, absolutely amazing result. Uh, so, it, yeah, it's, it's been a difficult run, to be honest. You know, Chelsea and Man United and now Spurs coming up, who are, I'd say are absolutely on fire. So I'm a bit worried. <laughs> you are a bit worried. But uh, just before the international break, Leicester City, you know, it seemed like a lot of momentum, I'll be honest. Going into... Hi, how are you doing? Thanks for having me on your channel. I'm obviously here to discuss about the mighty Spurs, uh, given the fixture coming up. So thank you again for having me on your channel. Um, regarding our season so far, I feel like both us and yourselves have had very similar starts to the, to the season. Drawn a couple of games. Obviously, you lost one to United and uh, 
We lost ours to Newcastle. So teams are at the same level at the moment. But um, no, I think the results obviously been the same. We've got uh, the same points. So we're only two places different. So it's, it's not been the best of starts for us. Um, normally, if you said to me a draw away at City and a draw away at Arsenal, um, th those would be great results. But it's more the fact that we threw the 2-0 lead away at Arsenal and we also lost to Newcastle at home. If it weren't for those results, it would have been a great start to the season, obviously with a 4-0 uh, battering of Crystal Palace last week. Um, it's, I'd say it's been a very average start, but we're known to not score many in August, um, so I'm, I'll, be, I'll be much happier now that the September fixtures are rolling in because I think we can start doing much better and hopefully do our best to catch up with uh, Liverpool and City. City were not too far behind, but uh, Liverpool have seemed to run away with it already. But yeah, I think it's been a very average start to the season, but I'm looking forward to this game. I, I love an away trip to Leicester. Um, I've done it pretty much every year for the past maybe four or five years now. Um, seen some great results and seen some poor ones as well, which brings me on to talking about Jamie Vardy, who, in my opinion, is obviously going to be a massive, massive threat. I've obviously seen him score against us before at your stadium. Um, it's not always the easiest place to play. Um, obviously, some some days we've had some pretty good results, but uh, I feel like it's very hit and miss. And I think you're totally right on what you said um, before about the fact that we just came back from Greece. I have myself. Um, on a Wednesday night and the fact that we're playing you very early on a Saturday is going to be proving tiring for a lot of players. However, what I will say is that Pochettino did purposely leave Aurier and Rose home tactically, which means I think they're pretty much guaranteed to start the weekend. So they're going to be fresh leg. They haven't gone anywhere. They'll be ready for the game. And to be honest, our game against Olympiacos did not go to plan. We obviously went 2-0 up and again threw that lead away to draw 2 all. So I feel like a lot of players are going to try and make up for that result. Um, Ericsson didn't have the best of games, so he really needs to start kicking in gear. But the good thing for us is that we finally have a much better squad. Last season, we didn't have any sort of threat really coming off the bench. I think Lorente was probably our best option. And even then, at the start of the season, he wasn't fantastic. Uh, it took him about half a season to get into it. But now we have... Uh, who do we have on the bench? We had Son on the bench. Uh, normally, he's obviously a starter, but for the Olympiacos game, he was on the bench. We had Lamella on the bench. Um, then we had like Wenyama, Dyer, um, Sissoko. There's plenty of players that we have now as backup. Lucas doesn't normally start. Um, he's a bit hit and miss as to whether he does or not. So he's a great player to come off the bench as well. So for once, we have a decent squad. And the only injuries we have right now is obviously new signing Lo Celso and uh, Ryan Sessignon, I believe are the only two that are currently out injured, so they will not feature. However, our breaking summer signing, Tongi Undombele, will no doubt start. He started against Olympiagos, but then took him off um, because he only just come back from injury himself. I would not be surprised if he, uh, if he started alongside Sissoko this weekend. I think they're a great, great French partnership, both very strong. Undombele's got very skillful uh, central midfielder, which we, don't, we haven't really had for a while. Winks um, is obviously great at holding onto the ball and passing out wide or making key passes forward. Uh, Sissoko is a strong centre mid, same with the likes of Dyer and Wanyama. Um, Eriksen is known to be our most creative player, but again, he's more further forward in the attacking mid role. As a centre mid, Undombele provides that great bit of skill that we've been lacking, um, especially since Dembele left in January. So I'm excited to see him play, and I think he could do very, very well against you guys. And again, I can't talk about Spurs preview and not mention the man Harry Kane. Scored a penalty midweek. He's been firing a lot of goals recently, which is great to see. And, you know, he loves he loves a goal against Leicester as well. So I think I wouldn't be surprised if he scores this weekend. Um, potentially, the, the tiredness could kick in with him. But given how professional he is and what a great goal scorer he is, like Jamie Vardy is as well, I, I don't think they'll, uh, neither of them will struggle this weekend. It's going to be a tasty game. And uh, I too predict, predict quite a few goals. I, can, uh, I think it's going to be... I think it's going to be a 3-2 Spurs win. I'm still confident we're going to get the win. I got the prediction right last year, so I'm hoping that this happens the second year in a row. But yeah, I think we're going to go for a 3-2 win with uh, Kane and Sonny Boy getting on the score sheet. And yeah, I think Jamie Vardy's going to score. He's a great player, like I said. But I'm just uh, I'm looking forward to just getting up to the having another away trip with Spurs. And hopefully see us get three points because we need to catch up with Liverpool because <laughs> they are going far away from everyone right now, even City, since they lost against Norwich. So I'm looking forward to it. I appreciate you having me uh, on your channel. Um, I imagine, again, links in the description. I've got matchday vlogs. It should be an absolute belter of the weekend. 
and I look forward to it and hopefully see you there. So thank you very much. Loserpool, where losing is winning. Losing on your accumulators gets you nowhere. So bring your losing expertise to Loserpool and give up trying to win and just simply pick a loser with our brand new Last Man Standing tournament. Lose and beat the last man standing wins you a thousand pounds guaranteed. Enter for free now. Visit loserpool.com. Lee, thank you very much for your um, your words there. I'm not sure how that's going to go down on this channel of saying um, you haven't got one of these in the corner of Premier League title. Um, yes, huge congratulations, you've got a Premier League title, but. Um, having Champions League football year in, year out is just absolutely fantastic. So uh, hopefully you can dream of that and uh, get that back one day in your lifetime. Now Tottenham in the Premier League at the moment are sat in third place, um, having played five games, won two, drawn two and lost one. Leicester City have exactly the same record after five Premier League games. Tottenham have scored 11 and conceded six. Leicester have scored six and conceded four and both teams are sitting on eight points with Leicester in fifth place. How did I feel about last night? Um, I love Greece, I love, the, uh, I love Athens, I love everything about it. Um, the food was fantastic. Um, and then there was the football. Um, absolutely um, delighted when we went 2-0 up. Um, I didn't think that we deserved to be 2-0 up when we were. Um, but when you are 2-0 up in a, in a game in the Champions League away from home, I just think that you just need to put the game to bed and just win the match. I really do. And uh, we did exactly the same. It reminded me so much of Arsenal away a couple of weeks ago. We did exactly the same thing. Now, a couple of facts here that we probably won't want to hear. But Brendan Rodgers, the Leicester City manager, has actually won his last five games against Tottenham um, as a manager. Uh, they all came whilst he was managing Liverpool. Um, and Jamie Vardy has actually scored 31 Premier League goals against sides from established top six uh, since August 2014. That is more than any other player. Now, big threats for Leicester this season. Of course, Jamie Vardy, we all know what he can do. And of course, James Madison. Now, since Brendan Rodgers actually took over 15 Premier League games ago, Jamie Vardy has actually been involved in 14 goals in the 15 games under Brendan Rodgers, scoring 12 goals and providing two assists. What a record that is. Um, James Madison has actually attempted the most shots without scoring in the Premier League this season. Uh, the only one of his 16 efforts has been on target though, but um, huge threat those two and certainly two players that we do really need to look out for. Anyway, my, um, my prediction for the game I'm actually going to go for a 2-1 Spurs win. Um, and I think Harry Kane will score. And I think uh, Hunmin Son will get the other one. Okay, so with me now, we have the Don himself, Don Cole uh, from 100% LCFC. He's a fellow content creator like myself. Uh, and uh, I'm just going to fire some questions straight at you, Don. Um, how 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 is Leicester's season so far um, in, in terms of, well, expectations to reality? Well, and thanks for having me, Lee. But um, to be honest with you, I'm I'm very happy with the season so far. I know you know a lot of us were let down with the last match, but overall, I've seen a huge improvement not only in the team but how our team approach is and and how we're moving forward. So overall, I think you know we've done quite well. I just think that you know we need little improvements. I think Rogers is still looking for that. Um, right grouping and I think once we get that we'll be pretty good uh, I, I believe in Rodgers um, he's definitely the next big thing for Leicester uh, going forward um, uh, 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 do you feel the same way about Brendan Rodgers uh, you know, being in charge of Leicester it, it, that was definitely a step forward and not a step backwards for from Claude Puel right? Yeah, I absolutely agree, and um, I I don't question anything he's done so far. I, th I think he's his approach. Um, he's much more engaging with the players. He's much more engaging with with um, how he's handling the team overall. Uh, he's very straightforward. I like how he's you know in his press conferences he tells you what he thinks and how he feels, and 
I think that's really all you can ask for as a fan is somebody that's going to go out there work hard every day and it, it really to me seems that that's what he does and I you know I look forward to seeing what he does in the future yeah he's he, he's very frontal with press conferences he's straight to the point and speaking of the press conference uh, which was today uh, we do have a fully fit squad to face Tottenham this weekend Ben Chilwell training away from the group on Thursday um, so we've got a fully fit squad again uh, Don yeah, and that's exciting because now the options are all there for you know everyone to get out to the pitch. And there's there's some guys I'd like to see get out there, but I'll really be interested to see who he brings out with a fully healthy squad and and who he wants to see out there against the Spurs. Uh, it's a game that I'm looking forward to see. Yeah. As you know, that's the first match that I got to see live in in 2017 when I came over last, and. Um, you know, I, I will say one thing. Albright and Tavardi was the first goal I ever saw, and I think that should continue. <laughs> so you're an Albrighton fan? I, I don't know if he fits in the Rodgers system, and I think that's why he's having a hard time getting into playing time. But it, he just he constantly gets the ball forward to Vardy, and I think he just opens him up more. That may not be the way Rodgers wants to play, and that may not be why he's on the pitch, but... Um, I've just seen it so many times where he, he gets that ball forward and, and gets him open and maybe open us up a little bit. He, he, he's a machine, Michael Brighton. I've got to say, he Michael Brighton will give you 110% every game, no matter what, for me. Uh, he's just one of those players. Um, but moving on to actual the actual Tottenham Hotspur themselves, uh, they... <laughs> They've had an interesting away form so far. They've they've basically bottled two two matches now. Uh, they've been two 0 up at the Emirates and and it, it finished two two. And they've just had a Champions League clash with Olympiacos, two uh, 0 up and fluff that to two two as well. Is that something that we can take advantage of with their away form? Um, I, I would like to say one thing about that is is they seem to go up early and we seem to give up goals early. Uh, I think that's something we're going to have to stay on top of and minimize that, that effect that they have in the first half. And we've definitely been a second-half team. And I think that, you know, we can not only come back but possibly win a match against them, even if they do go up. So their form is, has been pretty steady. I watched that match yesterday. When they brought Son on, I thought they were going to possibly get that last goal. But, you know, of course they weren't able to do so. And I wasn't upset to see them work as hard as they did. So... Um, I, th- I think we can compete in that match very, well, actually, quite well and win it. Yeah, you you just mentioned Son there. Um, he he seems to be one of these players that uh, no matter no matter what, he's one of those players that will some he'll get a goal regardless of who, who's on the on the field. If it's t- if it's Harry Kane up front or not, Son seems to get on the on the goal sheet every time. Um, he did that at the King Power Stadium in 2018. He got a goal, um, I think it was a, just before half-time, I believe it was. It was a late kickoff that was, uh, on a Saturday night. Uh, I, I'm scared of I'm scared of Son. He's the one player I think that's really going to make things, you know, change things with Spurs. I, I agree, agree with you 100%. And not only that, I think he'll play, he'll start, because they didn't bring him in until late in the uh, Champions League match. So... I think that, that he'll probably start, and he's definitely someone that we will have to pay attention to because he's, he's a, in, a versatile player, and he's strong. So, But at the same time, I know Soyuncu didn't have a great match last time. I thought Evans played well, but I think those two have done a remarkable job this season. You can't hold Soyuncu to that one match. So I think they'll be able to contain him. They just, they're just going to have to be smart and challenge the ball early. I think Chilwell's going to be a key in that as well. Um, I, I unfortunately don't think they'll play Fuchs over too well, no, too well which I, don't I prefer. Think so. Yeah, yeah. I, well, I just prefer because of Son and Harry Kane. I think defensively Fuchs is better, um, and and I'd like to see that. But again, I don't think that'll happen. But I, I think they can handle him. It's just I agree with you 100. percent Son's somebody that I'm. I'm I think he's a, a better at goal scoring than Kane is. Uh, yeah. That's my personal opinion. The numbers don't say that, but that's because Kane gets all the playing time and Son's, it usually comes off the bench. That's correct. Um, uh, he's got a massive fan base as well, Son. 
Uh, but this isn't the Son show. This is the Leicester. <laughs> <laughs> this is the, uh, the Leicester Fan TV 100% LCFC podcast. Um, and uh, thank you for listening on iTunes and SoundCloud. Make sure you hit the subscribe button. And you're now watching on YouTube as well. So please make sure you hit the subscribe button on the brand new channel that we've just put out there at LeicesterFanTV.com as well for all your Leicester news and gossip. Make sure you follow us at 100% LCFC on Twitter and also on facebook right before i go don i've got to ask you a score prediction for the weekend i i think we're looking at like a three two uh i think we can pull this out and it'll be late i think it'll be something that will come from behind on i can see them going up two one in the first half they're gonna they're gonna focus on barty yeah Uh, my hope is that we put barnes in that uh, we give ourselves another solid goal scoring threat um and, and if we do that, I think I think the possibilities there are uh, that we can definitely pull a 3-2 win out. I went for a 3-3 myself, uh, so we're both gone for high-scoring games, so we're both um, looking forward to an exciting, fast-paced match. Uh, so, right, thank you for coming on anyway t- t- today, Don. Appreciate your time. And uh, can we follow you on any social media channels at all? Uh, I just have the Late Night Fox uh, on Facebook that I do just for fun. Um, but other than that, uh, the 100% LCFC, I'm so fortunate to, to have not only met everybody because being here in the States, it's it's hard to connect up, but those guys are great. Yourself and Jamie and Phil do such great content, and they, for some reason, let me keep coming in and do this stuff. <laughs> All right, it's a pleasure, mate. Thank you for coming on, mate. I'll, I'll, ch- I'll catch you later. All right, thanks a lot. Have a good day. Don Cole, everyone, from 100% LCFC. Uh, Thank you uh, for listening on iTunes and SoundCloud. Right, I'm done. I'm out of here. Uh, I'm looking forward to the weekend. It's going to be an amazing game, and it's my birthday. So make sure you, if you do come down and meet me, get me me a beer and get me some cake. (laughs) Get me cake. (laughs) I'll see you on the next one, guys. Yeah.